Hey guys, what's cracking? It's Crack Nation, and we are coming at you guys today with another Generation 8 Pokemon Sword and Shield competitive analysis video, and today we're going to be talking about Dreadnought. Dreadnought was actually one of the first Pokemon released in, or announced, I should say, by Game Freak for Pokemon Sword and Shield in the trailers. Uh, so we saw it pretty early on, but we're just starting to get a taste of what it can do competitively now. And uh, I'm, it's honestly, I don't think anyone expected it to be a crazy powerhouse. I think maybe with some Dynamaxing shenanigans, this thing has a chance to be pretty good. But uh, it's definitely, I think, better than I was expecting it to be. Uh, it, it's, it's honestly got some offensive potential, and we're going to talk about it. So... Before I get into that, I just want to say quick shout out. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the outpouring of support that I've had recently. I, I've been to YouTube for, for almost five years now and I never did it because I was looking for crazy success. I did it because I enjoyed making the videos genuinely and I'd like to feel like I was helping people get better at competitive Pokemon. Even if it's a small way like understanding a new concept or getting to know a certain Pokemon matchup better. Even a little way, I just wanted to help people get better at uh, competitive Pokemon. Uh, so this support has been absolutely awesome. If you want to continue to support the channel, feel free to drop a comment in, uh, in the section below. That I try to respond to literally everyone. I think I've been doing a pretty decent job. Uh, I miss a couple here and there, but I'm doing my very best. Um, if you want to like the video, always really appreciate it. So if you want to subscribe, also very appreciate it. Maybe more than anything, that's absolutely awesome. I've also got a Discord channel if you want to check out in the description box below. You can join. Uh, we've got a few people in there now. My goal is to try to create a community where we can grow and uh as competitive Pokemon players as a whole, as a group. And so that's the goal. And if you want to support my dream here, guys, and if you want to support what this channel is all about and stay up to date with your competitive Pokemon analyses for sure, because I'm pumping those out, be sure to subscribe and I will really, really appreciate it. All right, well, enough of that. Let's get into Dreadnought today, guys. All right, so let's look at this thing's stats. So right off the bat, that 115 attack stat is going to stand out to you. 90 HP, pretty good. 90 defense, pretty good. And then after that, obviously the stats after that aren't that great at all. Four day special attack, we don't care. You're not going to run special attacks on this thing anyways. I'd honestly rather see... I mean, it's always good to have a Pokemon with mixed potential, but the worst is to see a Pokemon with like 70 special attack when it already doesn't have a high BST because that means so much of its stats were just squandered on a, on a stat you'll never utilize. So it's better to see really low ones than those middle tier uh, special attack or attack stats. You want to see one high and one low or both pretty high. Um, so then we've got the 68 special defense stat. So that's not that great obviously. And 74 speed. Faster than I thought this thing would be. Looking at this turtle, it does not look fast considering, I don't know, it's a turtle. But 74 speed, still pretty slow in the grand scheme of things, don't get me wrong. Pretty slow for competitive Pokemon play. But not as slow as I thought it was going to be when I first, uh, first saw this thing announced, gotta say. So it's a water rock type. Um, water rock is a typing we've seen a lot of in the past. A lot of the fossils are wa water rock types. Definitely a decent typing. Really good offensively. Pretty poor defensively, honestly. But a good offensive typing for sure. It's got a few different abilities, all of which have the chance to be kind of successful. Strong Jaw, Shell Armor, and Swift Swim. Uh, Strong Jaw gives you those attack boosts to bite style moves like Ice Fang, Crunch, Psychic Fang, stuff like that. Uh, shell armor is going to give you immunity to critical hits because you know I don't want to get crit So I'm already a fan of that and swift swim is going to give you two times speed in the rain So honestly three pretty good options there all of which have some op competitive viability in certain settings So we got to consider all those for sure So let's take a look at uh, the notable moves that dreadnought has and it knows a lot of them um, Razor shell uh, is going to be pretty good on this Pokemon uh, It's just a, but I think actually what the water move of choice is going to be is Liquidation, like it usually is. Crunch, Jaw Lock. Those are some dark type moves that'll give you some uh, boosts off from the Strong Jaw. I think Rock Polish is pretty cool because um, you can uh, give yourself those uh, speed boosts and then use that decent speed stat and start outspeeding some stuff for sure. Uh, Head Smash is an option if you just want to absolutely kill yourself, but kill your opponent while you're at it. Ice Fang is another option to use that Strong Jaw, hit those grass types that this Pokemon might fear. Uh, get Stealth Rock, which is awesome. Uh, Stealth Rock is going to be a really good move, obviously. Smart Strike, which is, like, super random for a turtle to get. I do not understand how, like, this thing gets Smart Strike, but whatever it gets it. Mega Horn is a really, really cool move for this Pokemon to get. Super Power, give you the fighting move along with Body Press. Poison Jab, this thing's just got coverage for days. Earthquake, always a great move, right? So you really have the cho choice to customize this set with whatever you want to use. Uh, you've got a lot of really, really diverse options to run any kind of Pokemon, any kind of way you want. So, 
Dreadnought has the chance to be an offensive kind of powerhouse on a wide variety of teams. I think it's going to be a lower tier Pokemon. I'm just going to put that out there right now. I can't imagine this Pokemon being above like NURU level power level. I think NU is probably going to be where it ends up or something like that. It's not strong and that's okay. Not every Pokemon has to be strong. That doesn't mean it's not going to be fun to use. That doesn't mean you can't try it out and have some fun with it. Absolutely doesn't mean any of those things. I just think it's not because of its kind of mediocre stats. Um, probably not gonna be the most competitive Pokemon but that's okay in the tier you use it in it'll be a fun time I'm sure so those are some notable moves for it let's go ahead and took a, take a look at some sets that I've made for you guys today so the set I've got here is rock polish um, and I actually made a couple mistakes here at this set looking at it right now so the item I put here is Life Orb, and the ability I put Strong Jar is Swift Swim, so that's going to be up to you to decide. Uh, I've got a few different options here, and you can kind of customize this set however you like it. Uh, 252 Attack, 252 Speed is going to be really good uh, for getting you that maximizing uh, your bulk, but also your speed when you're boosted up. And then an Adamant Nature, because you're going to be pretty fast with those boosts anyways. You can also always run a Jolly Nature if you feel like that's a better fit, but... I'm gonna go with Adamant here. Uh, I should, should say Rain Dance there, but for your first move, you're gonna run with Rock Polish or Rain Dance. Um, that's gonna be based on if you pick Strong Jaw or Swift Swim. Uh, both have their advantages, right? So Strong Jaw will give you options like Crunch and Ice Fang uh, to be really good competitive moves, obviously. Um, give them that Strong Jaw boost. But Swift Swim will also give you the same speed boost and give you a really, really powerful Stab Rain Boosted Liquidation. So I think it's going to be based on what your team needs, what you want Dreadnought to do, and what you want it to beat and or not beat. Because this thing has coverage. We saw it. This thing has got insane coverage. So we're going to have to pick which ones we want to use. So based on that, you're going to have to pick between Rock Polish and Rain Dance or Strong Jaw, Swift Swim. Obviously, if you go with Swift Swim, you're going to pick Rain Dance. If you go with Strong Jaw, you're going to pick Rock Polish. I think that goes without saying. But now... Stone Edge, I think, is going to be pretty much a go-to. You could also run Rock Side if you wanted to secure a little better accuracy. But I put Stone Edge here. I think Liquidation is going to be a go-to on all Dreadnought sets. It's just a good move. You're going to want to run it, especially if you end up running Swift Swim with Rain Dance. That Liquidation is going to be your best move to click every single time. The last move, I put a couple options here. Crunch if you're running Strong Jaw. You could run Earthquake. Other options are Ice Fang. You could run Poison Jab. You could run Mega Horns, another really, really good option. There's so many great options for that spot. Um, I just kind of put a couple options that came to mind for me. Uh, but again, like I thought like Stabs plus EQ, great combo. But there's also obviously Crunch with Strong Jaw is really powerful. Mega Horns a great move. You can hit those Fairy Types with uh, Poison Jab if you want. You can hit... You can hit a lot of stuff with this Pokemon, so you've got a lot of options for that spot. Um, the next set I've got right here is kind of bread and butter, kind of basic stuff. Uh, just a bulky set. We're going to run 252 HP, 252 attack, adamant nature, and we're going to have this be a team's rocker. If your team needs a reliable rocker, I'm pretty sure Dreadnought will be able to set up rocks on most physical attackers. So Stealth Rocks is there. And then Liquidation, Stone Edge, Crunch. Again, you can sub out Crunch for a wide variety of coverage moves that your team might need. In which case, you might want to switch to Shell Armor if you're not using a Bite style move. But for now, I've got Strong Jaw there. Shell Armor could be good to avoid getting those crits, obviously. Um, but for now, this is what I cooked up here. And I, I think it's notable that, you know, I'm, what I'm trying to say is you can customize these teams. All None of these sets are in a vacuum, right? So if your team really needs... Uh, a good way to beat gra uh, maybe like a dragon type. This Pokemon could potentially check a dragon type in a pinch if you give it Ice Fang. Or you could run Mega Horn to hit maybe that Psychic type, although Crunch is already doing that, I suppose. So, never mind. But you get my point. You can customize these sets as you need them. I'm just giving you kind of a bare bones to work with and see if you can tweak them to fit your team's needs. So let's look at pros and cons. First of all, as we saw, fantastic physical move pool. This is about as good as physical move pools come. Uh, you're going to be able to hit whatever you need to hit, literally. Um, and it's also got good offensive power. 115 attack, pretty good. Uh, it's got good, good offensive power. Decent physical defense, not standout, but it's pretty decent. And it's got that cleaning potential thanks to Rock Polish and Swift Swim. Now, cons are it's going to be pretty slow without giving it boosts. It's got a really bad defensive typing, which is to say... You're four times weak to grass moves, you're weak to fighting moves, you're weak to electric moves, um, you're not, you don't even resist water moves anymore, you're weak to ground moves, weak to a lot of really, really common attacking types in the metagame. So, it's a bad defensive typing, typing. not to mention, this Pokemon is not very bulky for a turtle, because you think when you, you think about turtle, I mean, like, think about, like, Shuckle, right? Like, turtles tend to be really defensive and have great defensive stats and something like that. Maybe not great HP, but great defense. This doesn't really have either standing out. So, not that bulky overall, and coupled with the bad defensive typing, uh, it, it definitely is going to be really exploitable on the special defense side, 
and physical defense is obviously okay, but still nothing stand out. The other thing I want to say is that it can't make great use of its abilities. Obviously, Swift Swim it has the potential to make great use of, I should say. But Strong Draw, it only gets Ice Fang and Crunch. It doesn't get Psychic Fangs. It doesn't get like Thunder Fang or Fire Fang or anything like that. So it's going to have a little bit of a harder time. I really wish it got like a Rock Bite move or something. Or like a Water Bite move to really utilize Strong Draw. Because that would be really sick, like a Aqua Bite or something. Like, a, I don't know. Like a random move like that would make this really, really good. But uh, it would make Strong Jaw just the easy Slam Jam ability to pick for this Pokemon. But as it is, you're not going to be able to make that choice that easily. So that's what I think about uh, as far as cons. Like I said, it can't make great use of that ability. So I'm going to give you a few team options and something to look out for when you're building with Dreadnought. First up, you're going to really want to pair it with some pivots. Uh, it's got a, it's got the chance to switch into some stuff for sure. So it's some, also, uh, got ch hopefully with pivots, you'll be able to weaken stuff so that it can come in and clean later. Hazard setters work the exact same way where you're setting up those hazards so that Dreadnought can hopefully clean with that set later. And then again, also wall breakers, just punishing and breaking down your opponent's defensive Pokemon so that they won't be a problem for Dreadnought when it goes eventually, hopefully, to clean and put on offensive pressure. Uh, big sets for it are powerful priority. Dreadnought is weak to things like Mach Punch, so you're going to want to look out for powerful priority when you're mid-sweep or mid-clean. Uh, those are going to be some big problems. Physical walls are going to be a big problem. A Pokemon like Ferrothorn is going to be something that Dreadnought just really, really can't hit, so you're going to need to keep an eye on that. Um, a big physical wall uh, is going to probably be able to overwhelm Dreadnought's great, it's good, but not great, physical attack. Finally, Fast Scarfers will probably be able to outspeed Dreadnought, um, so you're going to want to look out for Fast Scarfers. Because it's defensive typing, the reason I want to especially focus on this is because because its defensive typing is so poor, a fast Pokemon that can click like Close Combat or Power Whip could really, really mess up your day if you're running around with a Dreadnought. So you want to be careful about Fast, uh, fast Scarfers. Like, things that are going to be able to outspeed you even once you have a Rock Polish or a Swift Swim boost up. So that's my Dreadnought analysis, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like, guys. Comment down below. Join the Discord community. And if you really want to stay up to date with what I'm doing and the things I'm analyzing in competitive Pokemon, be sure to drop a subscription so you can always get notified when I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really has been awesome. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Kraken Nation out.